day welcome this is your daily med with lady v as we have been talking about various hindrance to prayer today we want to look at uh, praying for the wrong reason or having wrong motives at times our requests are not answered because the motive is wrong so the motive behind our asking is wrong it hinders prayer god does not hear when we ask to satisfy our own selfish interests our own selfish pleasure asking with the wrong motive is asking beyond our needs god promises to supply all our needs whether small or great but requesting beyond our needs is a prayer god would usually not answer so let us remember that we are in encouraged to ask the Bible says you ask and don't receive because we ask amiss so that we may spend it for our own pleasures James chapter 4 and verse number 3 when we pray we should not be as the hypocrites st matthew 6 5 and 6 tells us the bible says for they love to stand and pray in the sun of synagogues and in the corners of the streets why that they may be seen of men he says most assuredly i tell you that they have received their reward but he says children of mine when you pray enter into your inner chamber and having shut your door pray to your father in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly when we look at St. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus was saying, in, even in the previous verses, that when we give, when we pray, and when we fast, we should not do it in a public way. It has to advertise ourselves so that people would see us. He says, when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand did. He says, when we pray, we shouldn't be standing out in the public for everybody to see. When we fast, we shouldn't do likewise. But he wants us to avoid pride. Pride in giving. Pride in praying pride in fasting somebody says praying fasting and giving is the threefold cord that is not easily broken so the motive behind our asking should be to bring glory to God and to express our love for him in praise in worship in thanksgiving and in adoration why since all that we have all that we can ever achieve comes from god so paul says to us in first corinthians 4 and 7 how can we boast as though what we have received is not from God many times we have special gifts 
and he have special talents. And you will see a gifted believer. And this gifted believer we know received the gift from God. But somebody else might come and say, what is happening here? Why are you boasting? You did not get this gift all by yourself. It has been given to you by God. So Paul is saying to us in this case, why should we be proud? Why should we be puffed up with the things that God has blessed us with? Whether it's our gifting, whether it's our talent, whether it's a service for him even in the church or for possessions that we have. He is saying none of these things, whether our skillfulness, whether our cleverness, whether our education, it all comes from God. St. John 14 verse 13 through 15 tells us whatever, whatsoever you will ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you will ask anything in my name, I will do it. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So he is saying to us, here is a promise in St. John 14, uh, 13 through 15. He says, I will answer your prayer. So he exhort the disciples, listen, what you need to do, prove your love for me. Be obedient to me. Love one another. He says to us in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 31, Whatsoever you do, whether you eat or whether you drink, do all things to glorify God. So as we are encouraged, we see there are two great rules to guide us in our Christian lives. The first is to give glory to God. The second year in our lesson is that we should be concerned about the welfare the well-being of our fellow men and we understand he gives first year whatever we have so let us use it to glorify God sometimes in life we are faced with decisions Decisions that we have to make as to whether a certain course of action would be right or wrong. A good rule to apply. Is there any glory for God in this? I remember years gone by when there was a what would Jesus do kind of movement? Meaning when we find ourselves in situations, we would ask ourselves the question, if Jesus was in this situation, what would Jesus do? Our lesson is saying today, we can take the time out to bow our hearts before we participate in whatever it is that we need to do and ask the Lord what will be glorious
glorifying to him? Is it going to magnify his name? Or it is going to be as if we are dragging the name of Christ in the streets or in the mud. So we can ask him so that we will know what is his will concerning that which we are going to do. And remember 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Whatever do we do? He says whether we are eating or whether we are drinking, we must do all to glorify God. So let us come to him in prayer with the blessed assurance that he will hear and answer us. But we must come in faith. We must come with the right motive, the right attitude, and give him the glory that is due unto his name. God bless you. Thank you again for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share. Also, please comment. And don't forget to visit my YouTube channel, Daily Med with